Hi guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope that you are all doing well and staying healthy. Um, I know that things are a little bit, a little bit crazy right now, um, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to film a tutorial. I haven't made one in quite a while, but you know, if you're stuck at home and you want something to do, maybe this will give you a fun little challenge. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to play the main cello accompaniment part for my song, Little Ant. And if you haven't heard this song yet, I posted the final version to my channel two weeks ago. And that video has uh, four cello parts plus voice, but originally it was just written for this one main cello part with voice. So I figured that's what I would show you today. I hope that you have fun and let's, uh, let's get started. So to begin, as you look through the song, you notice that you don't see the word arco, A-R-C-O, that doesn't appear anywhere. But at the beginning, you do see P-I-Z-Z, -Z, which is short for pizzicato. And since you don't see an arco anywhere else, that means that you start pizzicato and you do it all throughout the rest of the song. And pizzicato just means that you're gonna be plucking the strings with your right hand. Couple of things about pizzicato. You don't wanna be, you know, plucking down here cause then you get your finger oils all over the part where your bow um, is gonna have to play later. So then you get the oils on the bow hair and that that's not good. And also it's just really hard to pluck at the string. It can kind of hurt, it's rough on your fingers and it's not a good sound. And you don't really wanna be plucking too high up here either. Really just stay in this area right here. And then of course you wanna make sure that you are solid with your hand. Don't float out here in, you know, the atmosphere above your fingerboard because, you know, you can lose your place, accidentally pluck the wrong string. You want to stay nice and close. So give a thumbs up, stick it to the side of the fingerboard, and you're good to go. Whenever you're looking at a piece of music for the first time, you want to take in a couple of basic things about it. Let's start by looking at the clef. As you can see, it's bass clef, which is good because you're not, if you're a beginner cellist, you're not gonna be learning tenor clef and treble clef for quite a while. So this is keeping it nice and simple. You're just in bass clef, it doesn't change anywhere throughout the song. Then we can look at the key signature and you see that we have two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, which means that any F and any C on your instrument, they are all going to be sharp. Next, we look at the time signature, which is 4-4, four, four, meaning that you have four beats per measure and the quarter note gets the beat. Regarding position and where to play this and how to start, you might look at it and see, okay, well, that's a D. Oh, I know where open D is. It's my open D string, right? And that's true. You could play the first measure as open D, F sharp, open A, and just kind of toggle back and forth like that. And that's fine if you wanna do that. The way that I played it, I actually kept everything up in fourth position because I liked the way that it sounded better. So um, this is one of the main things that I wanted to focus on in this video, talking about positions. If you aren't already familiar with fourth position, let me explain how you can find it and where it is in relation to your other positions. So probably most of you already know where first position is on the A string. If you're, if you're in first position, sorry, I can't talk. On the A string, if you're in first position, finger one goes on B. So here's your open A and here's B. First position right here on the D string. First finger would be on E. On the G string, it's on A. On the C string, it's on D. Now, um, walking up, you know, in half steps, you go through second position and third position, and then finally you make it to fourth position. If you want to test it and make sure you're really in the right place, you go to the D string and you put down finger one, you pluck it, and then you match it with your open A string. If they're the exact same note, you know that you're in fourth position. So in this case, I want to play a D first, meaning that my first finger has to be on the G string in fourth position. And I can check to make sure that I'm right by plucking this, check it with my open D. Are they the same note? Yes, that means I'm in the right place. We go D, F sharp, 
which is finger three on the A string, fourth position. So we're not shifting at all for the first, I think, yeah, for the first 11 measures. So you're good. Just stay right there. Don't move your hand. So one, three, and then A, one on the D string, back up to F sharp. Now, whenever you have very quickly moving notes, it would be really silly to go one, three, one, three, one, and just kind of put finger one down and move it whenever you actually uh, are plucking the note. Um, you don't want to move every single time that you have to play a D or an A. So what you can do, uh, and you know, this is what you do on guitar, right? You can make a bar with your first finger, lay it across. So your finger is not gonna go perfectly straight across the strings. You kind of have to angle it until you get that in tune. And it does take quite a bit of pressure. So be careful that you don't hurt yourself. Definitely let gravity do its work. Try not to push upwards with your thumb behind here. If you're pinching really hard, uh, that can just that can create so many problems. So be really careful that you're not squeezing the neck of the fingerboard, um, which is so easy to do, but let the hand fall into it, kind of like you're hanging from a tree branch. Yeah, so just keep an eye on it. Uh, if you find yourself getting really tense, maybe it's time for a break, maybe shake out your hand, and then you can reapproach it with a relaxed, relaxed hand and a relaxed arm. So that pattern that I just showed you, the D, F sharp, A, F sharp, that repeats itself measures one through four, and then the pattern changes at measure five. It doesn't change drastically. So again, please don't move your hand. Just leave it in that fourth position. Um, all you're gonna have to do is instead of having this bar laid across now, you change from finger one on the G string to finger three on E, but one stays where it was on the D string because you still want A. So here's E, A, and then the other note that we're um, using in this pattern is fourth finger G on the A string. So E, A, and G. And in order, E, G, A, G, E, G, A, G. So to practice, let's go really slowly. We're going to go from measure four into measure five so that you can practice getting that transition. So D, F sharp, a, F sharp, D, F sharp, A, F sharp. Here's E, finger three, finger four on G, A, G, three. So let's do those two measures again, and I'm not gonna talk so you can actually hear what I'm playing. Here's measure four and measure five. And then in measure seven, it goes back to your first, your first pattern. Um, and then throughout the rest, all up until measure 11, it just kind of bounces back and forth what I showed you. Um, by the way, I should probably point this out. I don't know if, whatever you wanna do, you do what is comfortable for you. Um, but whenever I pluck, I'm just alternating between fingers, between fingers one and two. So. D, F sharp, A, F sharp, D, and so on. Moving on to measure 12, you can see that we're now in cut time. So instead of being squarely in 4-4, four, four, little ant, that breadcrumb is too big for you. Mine is too. So you, you see how it feels like one, two, and three, and four, and now at measure 12, we're gonna kind of move it forwards. So let's see if I can sing this in tune, hold on. Something amazing happens when you are phrasing something sad into a song. So it feels more, I guess, moving forward, like flowing, I guess. Let's talk about the actual notes here. You are in second position here. So if first position, remember, finger one goes on, let's say if we're on the G string, it's A. We're playing the note A. So here's open G, finger one, here's A first position. Moving up into second position, we're going up a whole step, in this case, based off of the uh, 
based off of the key signature. We want B natural, not B flat, so it's up a whole step. Where third finger would normally go, we're replacing that with finger one. So here's your B, B natural. We're in second position right now. B, we go across to F sharp. So again, we have that finger one barred across, B, F sharp, they're a fifth apart, so you get to bar them. And then our third finger is gonna go on that D sharp, so finger three on the A string. Um, that's measure 12. Measure 13, we leave finger one in place for that B, and then instead of barring it across, we're gonna put three down on G sharp because G sharp is a whole step away from F sharp, whole step from finger one to finger three. So one, three, and then four on E on the A string. So B, G sharp, E. So going from measure 12, let's do this together. We're gonna play measure 12 and measure 13 to again, get that transition. And then if you look ahead, uh, measures 14 and 15 are the exact same thing. So now we're gonna move to measure 16. And here is where we go into half position. Half position is a half step below first position, which means that uh, first finger, well, let's, let's start from the very first note of that measure 16. First note is A on the G string. And normally we would play that with finger one, like what I just talked about in first position. But in this case, we're gonna use finger two. So two is on A, you go over to your D string, two is on E, and here's the reason, this next note is the reason why we're in half position. The next note is A sharp, and we can play that with finger one. So instead of normally having finger one on B, we're gonna get to play that A sharp with finger one. So two on A natural, two on E, another bar, one on A sharp, back to E. We play that three times. And then here at measure 19 is where the pattern slightly changes. We still have two on A natural, two on E, but then we have open A. And then down an octave, two on the low A again. And also you can see that there's a decrescendo and um, a, a retard. And then measure 20, we are back in fourth position. It's exactly like the opening of the song. And it introduces new material on measure 24, where you strum these chords four times. And let's talk about these chords really quick. Um, it's just open G, open D, and a B flat on top. Now what, you're, what chord you're playing is a G minor chord, but it's kind of got its notes out of order. G is on the bottom, so that's normal, but instead of going from G up a third to B flat, up a third to D, we just take that third, that middle note of the chord, and we put it up to the A string. So root, fifth, and then the third, is on top. So G, D, B flat. And then here are your very last chords. All three are the same. Finger one, finger one goes on the C string. Finger one is barred, so that finger one also goes on the G string in first position. So D, A, and then third finger goes on F sharp. I hope that that all makes sense. Um, if you want to practice playing along, go ahead and go over to the very first video that I posted of this song where it's just this cello part with my voice. Um, and I think I think you should be able to do it. It doesn't go too fast. So hopefully it's, it's uh, gonna work for you to be able to play along with. And um, yeah, 
Thanks for watching this video. I do hope that I was able to uh, help you in some way, give you something fun to do, and uh, that you learned maybe something you didn't know. So have a great day. Again, stay, stay safe and healthy and keep an eye out for my next video.